the idea behind My Dogfish Tennis is to have a really, really good system in place that allows a coach to do their own match tagging. So my background um, in tennis was that yeah, I came over and played um, collegiate tennis. I had a scholarship to Weber State University, which is in Utah. I studied economics and finance, and that, but I ended up becoming a teaching tennis or becoming the head pro at a club. I was offered that um, after the, the existing head pro left. I didn't have any intention of, of teaching tennis full time. I thought I would go into business. Um, and one thing led to another and I went up to Park City, Utah. I got a director of tennis job there. And it was there that, that you know, I was very heavily involved in video analysis on the technical side. I really believed in uh, the power of you know, bridging visual and kinesthetic learning. And I had this old video camera and a, a system that, you, that used to be operated or powered with a car battery that I wheeled out onto the tennis court and showed players what they were doing. And Park City is, is the home of the U.S. ski team. So some of the players I worked with were members of the U.S. ski team, you know, top world skiers. And, you know, some of them were Lindsey Vaughn, there's Ted Ligeti, Eric Schlopey, Bodie Miller. You know, a lot of them played tennis for cross training. And it was in one of those sessions that one of the skiers said to me, you know, why don't you use Dartfish? That was when I was introduced to software that was really, really powerful. And that actually started my whole journey with tennis and video analytics. My initial work with Dartfish was at the club, was just helping students with technical analysis. And at the same time, I was very heavily involved with the USTA and the USPTA, the Professional Tennis Association. And I actually introduced Dartfish to these organizations and at the same time became a consultant for Dartfish. Um, one thing led to another and I ended up working full time for Dartfish and leaving my teaching job. Part of my role was I had a region in the US and was involved in lots of different sports. So in Major League Baseball, NFL, a lot of sports, physical therapy. And I, my role was actually to sell the software and then train people how to use it. And it was very interesting because that was about the time of Moneyball. Um, so all of you, have, or some of you have probably seen that movie with Brad Pitt. And it was with the Oakland A's and Billy Bean. And anyway, I, got, I was very, very fortunate to travel around and do software training with Yankees and with Red Sox and uh, Rangers and all of that. They would use the software at different levels. Some for, for just for technical analysis and physical therapy and others would use it like the Oakland A's did for game film breakdown, indexing video. But I always thought about tennis because, you know, obviously I was still very heavily involved in the tennis industry. And it was, I formed tennis analytics really based on the learnings from, from baseball. So on, on the goals of, of tennis analytics, um, initially you know, we were just servicing our clients and I didn't really have a you know, broad goal. But what has ended up happening is that when I built the tagging panel, which is pretty comprehensive, you know, we're charting over 30 parameters. So we're getting millions, we have millions of lines of data at this stage. But the, the intention was not to actually uh, develop you know, this big database. That has been one of the positive results. We built a very sturdy tagging panel early on and stuck with it. So then what we ended up doing was charting across the scope of the tennis industry, meaning that we worked with under 12s, under 14s, under 16s, 18s, collegiate tennis, challenger level tennis, and also then with the pros. And I think very early on and even now, the emphasis has been to work with the very elite, only the top players. So what we've done over seven years is we've built this database that we can really understand, helps us understand the pathway of a junior from 12s to 14s, not based on results, but based on performance data. We offer mostly oppositional scouting services to some of the world's top players, you know, including you know, Davis Cup teams. So we work with the US and we work with Tennis Canada. Um, we've also done some oppositional scouting at you know, for Fed Cup at the Olympics, for the last three Olympics. You know, it's been very successful for us. 
We've worked with top pros, you know, on and off. We usually work with them until they get a new coach and then the coach will change everything when they come in. But a lot of our work at the moment is with Craig O'Shanzi and Craig O'Shanzi is a partner and a client um, and he works with some of the, the world's top players. So he sends us his video and we do all the analysis. We've built a custom panel for him. And then on the events that we attend, you know, because of the work with the USTA and Tennis Canada, we attend the, the US Open. I, I go to the US Open every year and also to Rogers Cup. Um, I used to travel to a lot of events, but now I've cut back on it because we actually don't need to physically be on site. We, we get the, the, the video feeds and that from, from all of the majors for the work we do with the USTA so we can work remotely. Um, on the junior event side, we work at some of the top junior events in the US, including Easter Bowl, Kalamazoo, and then upcoming in, in December, in the next couple of weeks, we'll be at uh, Orange Bowl. So we'll be at the Junior Orange Bowl, which is the 12s and 14s, and then the Orange Bowl for the 16s and 18s. We also do about another probably 15 to 20 events around the country. Uh, we have a team that goes out and you know, sets up cameras and that's pretty much how we generate our junior data. And then we work with about 40 collegiate teams and the collegiate teams will then send us video or we'll access their video systems that they have on their courts. When I got started with tennis analytics, you know, it was very early in the game. And I think that, that Djokovic was probably one of, one of the first players to actually adopt um, the use of, of analytics. And that slowly grew. And I think, you know, after about you know, four or five years, maybe there were maybe 10 players in the top 100 who were, who were using video analysis, you know, tagging as a really important part of their development. Now, I actually think it's very rare that if there's any player who is not using video analysis in one way or another, it's become a very important part of, of you know, every pro, pro player's team. And then also on the collegiate side, we, we've seen that that slow growth. We don't know why it took such a long time, but we do know that that the, the challenges in tennis, you know, are much greater than they are in some of the team sports like soccer and rugby and uh, cricket and baseball, because of the fact that in tennis, you know, you've got two people playing, and you know, the, at a tennis tournament, there could be 20 courts going on a junior event or more, and at a collegiate um, meet, you know, you've got 12 players playing on six courts. So the challenges are much, you know, much greater than, than on team sports. Why tennis analytics or why analytics is so important is because in the past, players have judged their improvement by outcome data, outcome information. That's like a win or a loss, or it's like their rankings or their ratings. So the assumption then is that if you're, if you are, if your ranking is not improving or your rating is not improving or you're losing, the assumption then was that your game is getting worse. And we know that that's not the case. You can lose matches and still be improving. So why match analysis is so important is because you can track a player's performance. So we could look at things like the percentage of points won on an opponent's second serve which is very important. Or we can track different areas in a player's game and then ascertain whether they're improving. And if not, specifically what areas that they need to work on on the practice court. Up to now, the practice court has been broken. Players would go out and just practice randomly. They didn't know what to actually work on. So when you start getting into match analysis, you start understanding exactly what your true strengths and weaknesses are. And that just means when you go to the practice court, you can practice what you need to practice and not waste time on, on just getting out there and hitting balls for the sake of hitting balls. Our basic workflow is that we will get the video from our client. Okay, either they will upload, we, we have an uploader, they send us the, the video with the details or if the video is on a, a dedicated system at our client's facility, we can access and download. Or, or we get it from, you know, from TV or some of the tournaments. But essentially we get the raw video from our clients along with the match details. We then have a team of taggers who are trained and what they will do is, is chart the match. And once they've charted the match, 
uh, using this panel that, uh, that we've developed. They will then uh, run the data through a QC check. So it's a data QC check, quality control. We then also have other quality control checks. Okay, a lot of them are manual and a lot of them are, are, are system driven. Once the QC passes, then what the tagger will do is then upload the charted video to our, our channel. And that is very important that, the, that it first passes that QC check because what we also do is we upload that um, data onto a SQL server. Okay, in the beginning, obviously, we, we, we never had this, but, but through organic growth and that we have uh, such a large amount of data that we need to keep that you know, integrity of the data. So the data is uploaded to a SQL server. And so we've got the SQL server and we've got the video. And what we did was we built an API. Uh, we did this with in conjunction with Dartfish and the USTA. The, the, the three of us at Tennis Analytics, Dartfish and the USTA partnered on accelerating this API that links the data to the video, which essentially means that when you go in and you, you pull up a report on a data visualization tool, it links the events um, to the video. So you could go say, I want to go take a look at a particular player's, all of their serves out wide on a 30 all point in the last three matches. And it would bring up a number, the all the stats, and then you'd click play, and it will just play that video. So it's very powerful. And it, for a lot of coaches and players, it, it brings context to the stats because for most players and coaches, they're not used to reading spreadsheets or even looking at all these pie charts and, and graphs and that. So that's typically our workflow is, you know, we, we get the video, we chart it, we upload it, and we give the end result for the coach or the player is really enriched video that is searchable and indexed along with the report. In tennis, you can chart every shot that is hit. You know, it would take a really, really long time to tag a match if we were tagging every single shot that is hit. So what you have to do is, is identify what is most important to the outcome, to winning or losing a match. So what we do is we've refined our panel over the years. And what we do is we chart you know, everything to do with serve and placement, the return and placement. And we also then on the return, we're now charting contact position, uh, where, the, where the returner is on the court when they make contact. So, and obviously with the serve and the return, it's efficiencies also, whether they make it or miss it and how they make it or what stroke they hit, if they miss it, where they miss it. So what we're trying to do on, especially on the first two shots is, in, in fact, all shots that we, we chart is identify patterns uh, or tendencies. So then the serve plus one is also a very important shot. That's the third shot in the rally. And that is the, or the second shot from the server. So the server would hit the serve and then the, his next shot or her next shot would be the serve plus one. The returner, their second shot would be the return plus one. So the first four shots we chart in great depth, okay? Because most rallies in tennis, the majority of rallies, regardless of the age of the player, whether it's girls 12s or if it's the you know, top women players on the WTA tour, the majority of rallies end within four shots. So, so tennis is, is actually a game of very short rallies. We tend to remember only the long rallies, the highlights, okay? Uh, but the fact is, is that points end within four shots. And then the next greatest rally length is the five through eight range. So we, we, we chart what happens there also. And usually that is just with the ending shot. So the ending shot would just be the shot that the player, it's either gonna be a winner or an error by one of the players. And the same thing as the return or, or the return plus one is we also chart contact position and then placement and the stroke that they hit. With that, it gives us a, a really good picture of why a match was, was won or lost. Each match takes us about, um, for every one hour of play, takes us about an hour and 15 minutes to tag. If we did tag every single shot that was hit, it would take us much longer and that would just drive up costs. So again, what we've done is we've refined our panel to just the important elements that a client would need to then go out on the practice court and, and make improvements. So an exciting project that I've been in, involved with is developing My Dartfish Tennis. Uh, this is a product, it's basically, it's a tagging panel or a system 
that is built with the idea that a coach can get a plug and play system where they can film their own matches and then using my Dartfish Tennis is chart their own matches. It is a pretty simple analytics, but all the important stuff, you know, everything to do with the serve and the return, rally lengths and all of that, winners and errors, because we know that a lot of coaches, you know, are not going to film and then uh, uh, want to pay for the tennis analytics service. So the idea behind my Dartfish Tennis is to have a really, really good system in place that allows a coach to do their own match tagging. And also not just coaches, but parents of juniors. So this is a product that we, we hope to refine even more and improve on. But at the moment, we're very encouraged that, um, that we've got something that we can deploy um, to parents and coaches and they can do their own tagging. So besides my work in Dartfish early on, you know, as a consultant and then full time and, you know, you know, doing sales and training, why, why I, I stuck with Dartfish? Because obviously with tennis analytics, there are other, you know, tools out there that you can use. But why I particularly stick with Dartfish is because it is a software application, very powerful software application that has both technical analysis tools as well as the ability to build your own custom tagging panels all in one system. While no software like this is, 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 can be considered cheap, okay, it is, it is also fairly less expensive than other systems out there and does a whole lot more. And what we're, what we're always very encouraged with with, with with Dartfish is that it's always a work in progress, that the developers you know, are continually working on uh, improving, adding, you know, adding features, uh, only necessary features. So we know that on the version that we're that, that we're on now, you know, there's all the core elements that we need. But we look forward to the improvements each year. They keep adding, and it's not just the software that we're using. It's a full solution. So it's the Dartfish also offers Dartfish TV which is an online platform and allows us to, you know, share this enriched content very, very easily. So for, for us, Dartfish is a, a full solution that, um, that our business has essentially been built around. Um, we work very closely with the developers. So if there are any issues with the software, with new versions and that, they're very responsive. Um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we are always very happy to refer clients to Dartfish because of, you know, how responsive and how, how, how good and sound the, the software platform is.